we all love sports cars and heck I'm a big fan of going fast but after a week long test drive of well four inches off the ground this six foot frame can get a little bit sore hey welcome to this dish and road warrior I'm your host Grant Robertson now behind me is the type of vehicle I like a nice SUV this particular model the 2015 Nissan Rogue so let's break down exactly what this brings to the table now if you take a quick look at the Nissan Rogue you may get confused heck is it the Rogue is it the Pathfinder what it all comes down to well is the overall size the Pathfinder coming in a lot bigger this one we'll get into the measurements in just a second but when you look at the profile it's exactly what I like looking for nice sleek lines very basic exterior here nothing real chiseled and we don't really go into that crossover segment here because this truly is in the mid-size segment and they keep it pretty much standard SUV now this model was the front wheel drive version which was fine because we didn't take it off road but there is the all wheel drive just in case you do have those snowy conditions now we're sitting on 17 inch wheels here and one thing you'll notice on this particular model is the nice rubber cladding all the way around now this is a dark exterior color paint dark cladding so it doesn't really contrast too bad now some vehicles are stopping short down here on the lower portion not putting any any around the wheel wells really going to give you some scrapes and dings should you get some of that road harshness flinging up now what i do like is we have decent ground clearance which comes in handy when you do have that all-wheel drive lastly pretty much body color all the way around with a little bit of chrome accents so let's see where those are where you're going to find the chrome accents is really under the rear tail light and headlight assemblies along with around the windows now you also find some on the door handles now up on the roof rack that's more of a brushed aluminum like styling now i would have preferred that style over the chrome because when you add this to much chrome it really looks like a mr t starter kit now on the road just like the pathfinder what we found is the belt line this kind of upper portion right here is really high it makes it feel like your pants are pulled up too high now what i would have liked is to minimize this overall look because even as you sweep around to the back it starts to rise just a little bit more to me it's too high three quarter kind of look and really just feels too bulky i talk about grill warfare a lot and what you're going to find here on the rogue well is the really huge chrome accent in the center with a stylized v in the middle and the nissan emblem in the center now there is a little bit of chrome down below otherwise there's pretty much body color all the way around now we do have a little bit of black inserts here and there and it does have somewhat chisel now what it means is well it looks a little bit out of place compared to the rest of the body because this has so much going on when you sweep down the side pretty much plain jane looking at the overall numbers we can compare it to the nissan pathfinder that coming in quite bigger now by the numbers we're looking at about 182 inches here 15 inches shorter than the pathfinder now the wheelbase 106 inches again about eight inches shorter than its brother now what you're going to find here is that it holds decent occupancy now both vehicles have three rows of occupancy can hold up to seven it's just a matter of which size you prefer when you're squeezing the tight spots one thing to talk about is the smart key systems that a lot of vehicles are coming with pretty much keep the key in your pocket now what's great is it corresponds with the button on the handle and what took a little bit of getting used to is you press it once it unlocks that particular door but if you quickly press it again it'll unlock the rest now when you swing around here to the back we've talked about this late lately and that is the fill up area now one thing you'll notice on a lot of vehicles well it stays locked when the vehicle's locked once it's unlocked it pops right open well not the case here this one a little bit more cumbersome get out of the car come around here forget to pop it well you got to go all the way back around because it's got that little lever now I'll swing around to the back and look at the cargo one of the best parts on any suv has to be the built-in cargo when you swing around to the back of the rogue this is where it all starts now what you're going to notice is fairly big glass across the back and this windshield wiper here on the glass now what it's going to do is prevent this glass from actually popping up something that's really fallen by the wayside and only a few suvs offer that now we do have quite a bit of hangover here this is actually one area a lot of vehicles are taking this and moving it up here and hiding it allowing this glass to pop open now with that not being able to be done none of the stuff can kind of sling out here keeping everything confined to the vehicle now when you come back here what you're going to notice on this particular model is the power rear hatch now there's two buttons way down low here and you got to get used to them one's kind of raised to here that's actually going to lock and unlock the vehicle to the left of it is the press button now what you're going to do there there is just going to rise up and what you're going to notice is well it takes just a little bit of time and that's of course for safety now once it's open what you're going to find is decent cargo now with all of them laid flat it's going to be around about 70 cubic feet as the second row is folded up that's going to be around about 32 
Now with all seating in place, it's gonna be an anemic nine cubic feet. Now this is where the Pathfinder kind of wins out just a hair because behind the third row in the Pathfinder, that's around about 16 cubic feet. Looking at the rear cargo just a little bit more, what you're going to notice is a 50-50 split third row. And that's going to be helpful when you want to add more gear like we have here and keep an occupant. Now, as for the rear cargo, what does 9 cubic feet look like? Well, about this much space, not a lot of room. Now, looking at the third row, what you're going to see is this headrest that when you need it, you lift it up. That's going to kind of let the rear person sit there just fine. When you don't need them, you're going to want to put it down because that does give you quite a bit of blind spot when it's in its full position. Now to fold down the third row, pretty much pull this handle here, slide it forward. That's going to give you a nice flat cargo, especially when all the seating's laid flat. Now one thing I really like is finding rear power back here. They have it hidden in this little niche. And that's really going to be helpful because this makes a nice sitting area for any tailgating. You can add just a little bit more space to the nine cubic feet right underneath this rear cargo. There's a nice little area right there. Not a lot, but maybe an area you want to keep items in all the time. Now to close this rear hatch, one thing to note with power hatches as well, they can be cumbersome when you don't use their power, specifically pulling them down. What you know is it's got a little bit of weight to it and really doesn't want to do it that way. So instead, you really need to utilize the button right here. Now for the vertically challenged, a lot of people argue, put this button over there because some people just can't reach it when it's on the rear tailgate. When you look under the hood, you're not gonna find a V6 power plant, but instead, well, a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder engine. That's gonna to equate to around about 170 horses and 175 foot pounds of torque. Now, what does that mean? Well, somewhat anemic power press the gas and inevitably you're going to get up and go no neck snapping starts from here now if you want a v6 that's obviously going to be on the nissan pathfinder now what that means overall well this is not a toy hauler but more of a people person type of vehicle put everyone inside and well forget about tow capacity now last thing you need to think about is well fuel economy and that's really going to come in handy here considering front wheel drive is going to average around about 33 miles per gallon when you climb inside the road this is where it's going to feel more well like a minivan than an suv mainly because well it's comfortable and where it starts is in the leg room numbers what you're going to find here on the road is about 43 inches up front and that truly is plentiful for anybody even my size six foot and over now when you go to the second row still not bad about 37 inches when you get to, to the back well to be expected around about 31 now compared to the pathfinder the real true difference is well equal legroom numbers on the pathfinder both in the front and second row and comparable numbers here to the rogue in the very back one crucial feature on most vehicles comes down to the dash and the convenience of this area right here, the entertainment and climate controls. Now what you're gonna notice is really the oversized touchscreen system with a few buttons to the left and right. And I like the fact that, it's, well, it's pretty easy to navigate. Simply press the corresponding button. Now what I also like on a lot of vehicles is when they put a home screen here. It's gonna give you all the choices right on one screen. Here you really gotta select your navigation. Now another feature while we're here is the camera select. Now this does have surround view, backup cameras, and pretty much that's 360 here. Now it's gonna be great in those tight spots, but for this vehicle, I found it not necessary, a little overkill, because I really had no blind spots when I drove this vehicle. Looking at the climate controls, everything is really nice and simple, and you do have dual zones here on this particular model. Really dial in your specific temperature. Now instead of buttons for the fan speed, I wouldn't mind a little knob here. It would help mirror the other knobs. Now for mode select, everything else is really simple, and a lot like the digital readout. Now, one thing that is missing on a vehicle this big, well, is the tri-zone system. There is no climate control for the back passengers, pretty much leaving the front occupants to control everything. Underneath everything, really down here in a niche, is the nice connectivity, the USB connection, auxiliary jack, and a power supply. Now, again, some vehicles are putting two power supplies here, two USB connections. In this case, it's just one, no big deal. This area is actually a nice area for your phone. Store them here, let them charge, and when you do the Bluetooth connectivity, heck, this is the only place you need to put them. Looking at the gear shifter area, what you're going to notice is that bright accent, the black that you notice on the dash, and a little bit of brushed chrome around it. Now, the gear shifter, really nothing to write home about. Now, between the front occupants, really dual cup holders, a nice little niche, and the heated seat buttons here as well. Now, for elbow support, what you're going to notice, a nice padded elbow and a two-tier storage area. One little storage up above, 
and a D for one down below. Now what you're gonna find in there is a power supply, but no USB connections, which you find on other vehicles. For the gauge, it's pretty much stereotypical analog tack on the left and analog speed on the right and in the center, a little bit of a digital display. Now one thing to note, when you're driving and you come to a park, pretty much the door is going to be locked and one thing i noticed is well there's no real way to unlock it now this concerns me because in a panic type of situation you're not going to think to grab this little area right here and unlock it manually instead i think you should be able to pull this handle and the door opens right up at least on the second try now down here on the lower left is kind of the equivalent of a Boeing 747. Lots of buttons that you may need to get used to. Some specifics, really the traction control, the sport mode, the rear hatch, and even the lane departure system. Now that's a system that detects when you're going out of the lane and gives you kind of an audible warning. Now that did get slightly annoying, so I tended to turn it off. Now way down low is going to be that lever to unlock the gas that we talked about earlier along with the hood latch. Swing around to the second row, let's talk about one thing real quick, and that is this particular fabric you see. Now, I think the color, well, it's gonna to lead to stains or some darkening of the material. Instead, I'd like to see maybe a gray or a darker type leather really gonna help this last a little bit longer. Now, let's talk about also converting this from people to cargo hauler. Now, typically, it's gonna be a one-handle type situation right here, but instead, when you pull that, all that does is slide this forward and back, giving you quick egress into the third row. Instead, to actually lay this into cargo, you're gonna pull handle down here first, then tumble this forward. That's gonna give you a nice flat cargo. And again, this is about an 80-20 split, allowing you to see people and cargo all at one time. We talked about leg room and kind of that anemic amount they have in the very back. And what you can do to help with that is sliding this second row. And of course, that's the old standard pull the bar here and it's gonna travel forward. That's gonna give the a little bit of room they have here to the back passengers. Now, last thing is really the comfort. And the way you can find that is reclining these seat backs. Again, pull this simple handle and ease it back. That does for this dish for Ray Warrior and a test drive behind the wheel of the 2015 Nissan Rogue. A nice addition and complement to the Nissan Pathfinder. Now the difference between the two, obviously this one a little bit smaller, a little less cargo, and well a little less power under the hood. But it could be the perfect fit for anyone that well, doesn't need all that. As always, I'd like to thank you for watching this dish for Ray Warrior. Keep both hands on the wheel and eyes straight ahead.